Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rocketeer. What if you've built something like this Estes Majestic? Is it stable? Well, yeah, it probably is. But what if you've assembled something that looks like this? Is that going to be stable in flight? Well, that's a little hard to determine. So today I want to talk about Open Rocket, a program that's open source, which means it's free to you, and it will determine rocket stability. You can design, plan, you can simulate flights of it. So today we'll cover the installation, and in the next section, we'll cover adding motors and simulating flights. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is download the Open Rocket file. It is a JAR file or a Java runtime file. So if you use a Java file, you also need the correct version of Java. So I am going to put both of those in the link in the description below. So make sure you check that out. And uh, you need both of these files to run the, the Open Rocket. You only need to install the Java runtime file just one time. Uh, but for convenience, I have put both of them uh, in a folder to keep them together. Now to launch the program, once you install the Java runtime, you'll double click on this jar file. Now, when you first open it up, you, or even when you download it, you may get a warning that it could be um, a malicious file or something like that. It's not. Uh, I have tested all of them and they're all good. So just, uh, you can ignore those warnings and uh, just go ahead and run the program. Okay, once you have downloaded uh, the files, I, I put them in a folder inside of Open Rocket, and um, this is in my documents to make it easy to find. And uh, also, these are some more files uh, of, that I have downloaded. They're uh, RKT files, and they're also o ORK files. Now, We'll go ahead and open up the program and I'll describe uh, what that means in just a second here. So we'll launch Open Rocket. And this is what the interface looks like here. Now, the first thing you need to determine is how you want to set up Open Rocket. If you want to set it up and uh, go to the Preferences under Edit tab, and then you'll go under Units. And here you can select either the default metric or if you live in the U.S., you can go to the uh, antiquated imperial <laughs> measurements. But because I have a lot of international viewers, I'm just going to go ahead and use the default metric. And uh, that'll make it easier for you guys. All right. So once you set that up, now we'll open the file. All right. So you go to File, Open, and there's also an Open Recent there. The one I want to look at is called Viper 4, so I put that in a folder. So I'm going to select that file. It's an RKT file, which means it was uh, designed by Roxim. And uh, Roxim is not a free program. You can get it through Apogee, and uh, it's a great program. Uh, I haven't used it. I've been very happy with Open Rocket. I suggest you give that a try first. And if you want to try more advanced things, uh, you can try uh, the file also from um yeah wherever it was anyways we're gonna open this file up uh and hey there's our rocket now there's a lot of things you can do here uh, but one of the, one of the first things that i do is check and make sure that the file is valid and what i mean by that is sometimes there are errors in the original file so uh, don't let that bother you. We're going to take a look at everything and I'll show you where some of the pitfalls are. Now, this particular file came from Lock Precision. Um, it has some un unusual, um, it's set up in an unusual way and, and we'll go through that. But uh, we'll start with the nose cone. And by if you double click it, uh, you can open up any one of these that are over here in the rocket design area. So uh, the first thing I always check is if the component material is correct. As you can see, it's polystyrene, which is correct for this model. Uh, but there's also aluminum, brass. Uh, I don't know why you'd want a brass uh, nose cone, but you might want a brass launch lug. Um, carbon fiber, if you uh, have that kind of money. But uh, anyways, I'm going to uh, select the default which was there's also a fiberglass one in here um, and the default was give me just a second here oh it's still at po polystyrene okay so <laughs> sorry about that this is my first video tutorial so I'll bear with me okay so the component material is correct um, 
You can see that it has a mass component and that's what that little weight looking thing is here. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to the override tab and I can see that there's a mass of 85 grams that's been added to the nose cone. Now I don't know if that was intentional or if uh, that's just something that kind of got carried along from another file, I'm not really sure. If I'm going to ride a um, add a mass component uh, that's not how I prefer to do it so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uncheck these boxes that says override mass and you can see now that it has disappeared if I just re-enable it you can see the mass component there but uh, we're just going to take it off for now and we'll come back to that in just a minute so okay we'll go back to the general uh, the nose cone length looks about right uh, the base diameter all that looks about right and the component material is is uh, right on so the next thing I usually do is check and make sure that the body tube also has the correct component and in this case it's uh, paper which is uh, the correct one to select for this model but you could also select blue tube or fiberglass or whatever your model is made out of but I have verified that and I verified the body tube length, uh, the outer diameter is correct. And I can see that the component mass is declared as 157 grams. That's probably about correct. But occasionally you'll find if you add a component that the component mass is missing. So I'll show you how to handle that. All right, I'm gonna close that tab. Uh, the rest of it looks uh, about like it should. Uh, this is the center of gravity here, and the red dot is the center of pressure. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, in the first video and a lot more in the second video because those two are what determine the rocket stabilization. Okay, we can see some other things here. The parachute seems to have a mass added to it. Uh, you can see the little uh, weight thing here. So I'm going to go to the uh, override tab and I'm going to go ahead and delete those. All right, now, now that we've made a few changes, the next thing we wanna do is go to File and Save As, okay? And then we're gonna change it from RKT file to an ORK file. I'm just gonna call it an ORC file uh, because you cannot save it in an RKT file. It's like, a, I think it's like a proprietary file. So the native file for OpenRocket is an ORC file. And uh, if you save it as an RKT file, it won't save any of your changes. So one of the first things you wanna do is when you make some modifications is save it to the ORK file. Okay, we've done a couple things over here. Uh, we can check the parachute out and it's uh, 45 centimeters. You can also edit this. So I'm gonna go 45 cm here. And if I tell it, uh, if I close that, uh, it will show up as centimeters over here. And that can be handy if you start naming things uh, or if you start changing the size of your parachute or something like that. And you wanna remember what it is, um, you can always go back and take a look at this or edit this uh, as you go. Okay, so let's say that uh, we can't determine it yet, but let's say the rocket is not stable. Okay, one of the ways, to... okay, let's take a look at a couple more things here. We're gonna go back to the body tube or the airframe and uh, we'll make a couple changes to that. Right now it's at 76.2. You can, let's say we we'll bump that up to 77, uh, whatever length we want. Uh, we can grab the slider, make it shorter, make it longer. And that's how you design your rocket or make changes in your rocket. So we wanna go back to about what it was here. There, that's close enough. Uh, so you can do this with any of the components, with the nose cone, the fins, you can make uh, a lot of changes to the fins, uh, but that just kind of shows you how that works. All right, you can also hold the shift key and select things. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna select this. And you can see over here that this is the shock cord. All right, so I'm gonna double click the shock cord and usually it's, uh, in my rockets, it's more towards the motor end. So we're gonna go ahead and do an override on that. And we can also change like say the packed length of it because I think typically it takes up more room than that. 
You can change the diameter, just make sure it doesn't go outside of the rocket body because that will cause a warning, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But uh, as long as it stays uh, relatively inside the, the rocket body uh, in the airframe, you'll be okay. All right, so I kind of like the looks of that. So I am going to go and move it uh, down. There, that looks about right. So it's generally towards the bottom and the parachute's towards the top. So I'm gonna call that good enough. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click on the parachute right here and open up that. And I'm gonna change the pack length to that because I think it probably would be longer than that. But you could measure the pack length of it. Um, Anyways, I'm going to move that down a little bit closer to the shock cord. Uh, we don't want to overlap it. So, uh, right about there. That, no, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so that shows you how you can change the size and the shape of things and move them into the position that you want them to. All right, now I see there's something here. I don't know what it is. So I'm going to hold the shift key and click on it. And that shows body tube. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to get that. Okay. Looks like there's another shock cord added here. Um, not sure what that's in there for, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that right here. Check the delete button and it's gone. Okay, so that'll give you a few ideas on how you can move things around in open rocket, how you can add a mass weight and uh, add weight to the nose cone. And those are all really valuable here. Um, there's also, uh, let's see, there's a mass component here I'm going to get rid of. Right, so let's, there, that makes it go. Okay, so uh, our rocket's looking pretty good. Um, there's a, just a couple more things I want to go over. The next thing I want to add is a coupler. So we'll select the body tube here. And we're going to click on the coupler over here. And we are going to choose top of the parent component and then we are going to go ahead and slide it up uh, to right about there that looks good now you can see in the component mass is registered as zero so we want to compensate for the weight for that because it will make a difference in the stability of the rocket so we're going to go ahead and go over to the override override mass and we're going to add our standard uh, that we've been using 10 grams or so I don't know how much it weighs. The best thing to do would be to weigh it and then add the override mass. But just for the illustration, we're gonna go with 10 grams. Uh, it probably weighs more than that. But anyways, uh, and then close. Okay, so we can see that we have the two coupler here and uh, a mass weight is added to it here. So that's it right there. All right, so if we select the body tube, it's there. Hold the shift key and we can select the tube coupler. And of course, we can always uh, move it as we find necessary, uh, make any changes to it. If we want to make it uh, a little bit longer, like say if it was going to be uh, like that. Okay, so that gives you an idea. There's also a uh, paint and glue weight added in this area here. And uh, I'm just going to, it says 85 grams. I'm just going to leave that for now. Uh, we'll come back to that when we do some uh, stability testing. So that's a, a pretty good primer for open rocket there. It is very capable. I'm not an open rocket expert. There's a lot more that you can do with it. Uh, you can change the view here. Um, you can change it to 3D unfinished and uh, that looks pretty cool. Uh, also, you can choose uh, 3D finished and you can change the colors of it and things like that. So do some pretty neat stuff there. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the side view. And at this point, uh, it shows the length of our rocket here in this area. Um, and it shows the mass with no motors and it. it says 548 grams. So the best thing to do is to weigh it uh, once you have it assembled with the parachute, the shock cord, uh, whatever you have added to it. You could add a mass weight for, um, if you wanna put some uh, dog barf in it or something like that. Uh, some flame retardant stuff um, and just weigh the rocket and verify that if it's off you can always add a weight to it uh, a mass component um, but over here we have there's no motors selected uh, it has a stability of 6.18 uh, but that's because there's no motors in it so in the next video we'll take a look at how to add motors to it how to simulate the flight how to change the motors 
and uh, how you can check uh, what size parachute you, you need and things like that. So stay tuned. It's going to be fun. All right. We'll talk to you later.